Hello everyone, my name is Appleguy. Welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today we are here in the mineshaft nearby our house just outside because today we're going to be working on our elevator system. I have been developing an elevator we can use here on Bedrock Edition for quite a while. I've been digging out the elevator shaft and preparing some of the materials. And so in today's video, I believe we're going to finish preparing the area. Oh, yikes. We're going to finish preparing the area. I don't think we will get to building the actual elevator today, um, perhaps next episode, but I want to be in the position where all we need to do is start going. Uh, I have a design finalized and I have one fully picked out and I think I will show it off both in today's video and the video when we build it um, because I think it's very essential you guys know what we're getting into in order to um, to understand why we need the materials otherwise I'd just be gathering up a bunch of redstone components and it doesn't make too much sense. So we might be spending a bit of time today in the creative testing world and uh, hope you guys don't mind about that. Uh, while I'm just kind of digging out this uh, shaft, though, this is the elevator shaft. I believe it is a 4x4 four four square. Perfect. This is where the elevator is going to go up and down. Um, I want to thank you guys for the response on the previous video of the series where I showed off the uh, progress on the Overlook Hotel from The Shining. Uh, I spent a lot of time preparing those time lapses and whatnot. And um, to have the video be received well is always a joy. This lava is quite the pain, but thankfully I have resistance and I have... What else do I have? I have uh, regeneration. Perfect. Alright, just a little more to go now. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so I want to thank you guys for that. Uh, I suppose now though we can move on to our next project, which is, as I mentioned, this elevator. So I should explain, I suppose, my inspiration for doing this. Uh, there is a lot of cool, interesting stuff below the ground now, and I think having access to such a cool area is a wonderful idea. And so I want to create a, uh, a very industrial elevator. I want it to be like an elevator you would see in an abandoned mine shaft. I believe the main inspiration for this, for me actually, was the um, Dark Pictures Anthology video game. I believe this specific uh, story... Um, it wasn't Man of Medan, it was whatever the most recent one is, the one about the, like, the soldiers. Uh, Dark House? Little something house? House of Ashes? House of Ashes. In House of Ashes, no spoilers, but at, at some point they do end up in a mine shaft, and there is uh, an elevator suspended by, like, a single chain, it's for, like, one or two people. Um, and it reminds me of the elevator that the miners use in order to get into their, their caves. And so I wanted to go ahead and make one of those of my own. Uh, so we're going to prioritize function, first of all. And I can tell you that the design I chose to go with uh, is functional. It is not the necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing uh, choice to go off of. Um, and we'll explain why in just a moment. Uh, basically, it's a slime block flying machine, which for those of you guys who are familiar with those uh, should... Um, should ring some bells, hopefully. Basically, it uh, it just flies up and down instead of left and right. So in order for it to be able to go, it needs to have room to not touch the sides. So it's going to be kind of floating a little bit. Thankfully, I have a creative world that we can actually hop into very soon because I just about finished digging out the entire shaft. Perfect. Our straight up 4x4, or maybe it's a 4x5. It'll probably grow larger as we continue because I guarantee I will need uh, more space. But let's go ahead and hop into the creative world so I can show you what I'm planning. All right, so here we are in the creative test world. Some of these uh, items should be familiar to you guys. And behind me, I have two different versions of the same elevator. We're gonna go ahead and begin with the one here on the left, which will explain uh, the, the basic concept, how the elevator works. Um, oh, you know what? We're actually gonna need to, uh, we're gonna need to ride it from the bottom up, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it ride from the bottom up. Um, basically, as you can see, this is designed to fit into uh, the shaft that we just dug out. This is what it's going to look like uh, when it's all done. And um, it looks like, oh, it's it's rising. You can see it rising. There we go. All the way up. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, so imagine that this is that uh, hallway we just dug out or just walked through. We'll step inside. This is the, the cavern we just dug. We'll push the button and the elevator will begin to lower down. It is a little loud because, like I said, it is based on... Um, a flying machine which means pistons slime blocks etc but it can go down 
as far as I want it to go down. As you can see, we are riding the elevator. This is going to be us descending into the mine shaft. Do do do. And when we reach our floor, it will stop. We can go do our mining, come back, and um, hitch a ride back up. I'm going to go ahead and let it fly past me though, so I can explain some things. You can see there's slime blocks, observers, these terracotta blocks. It knows when to stop when it reaches this obsidian. And when you want it to become moving again, you push this button, which pushes the bottom unit back in. Now, a feature I definitely want to add is a call button. Uh, basically, let's say uh, we, we found our way into the mine shaft from a place other than the elevator. We fell into a really deep cavern. We're like, oh, I want to go up, uh, but the elevator's not here. You can push the elevator down here at the bottom and slowly but surely, you can see that the elevator will begin to come back down. Now, I did copy this design uh, off of a YouTube video, and so I will include a link to that YouTube video in the description. Uh, so you can imagine that this area, this blank area right here, is the shaft I just dug. You can see why it is um, currently open, because we're going to have to run uh, a long line of observers. These observers is how I got the call button to work. Of course, I did it in creative mode, so I didn't really care about resources. I just placed them down. Uh, speaking of resources, this is what you will need in order to build the elevator. Uh, any length, any distance, it can go up and down vertically. Uh, this is all you'll need. If you want to have a call button, you'll need a differing amount of observers depending on how tall or how small it is. Uh, but that is the supplies, so we're going to hop back into the survival world now and begin to gather those supplies up, and then we'll be able to begin building probably in the next episode. Now that we've seen our end goal, we are definitely ready to continue forth and make things happen. Like I said, we're going to be spending today gathering some materials for this elevator. I will be building the elevator most likely in the next video. I crafted ourselves a book and a quill to transfer over the materials list in. And by the way, I really like how Bedrock Edition does, um, does books. You have a lot of features like transferring pages. You can straight up delete a page. You can also add pages from here. It's very neat. So we're going to get out our project box, our handy dandy project box, of course, and start going down the line. We need two sticky pistons and two normal pistons. Okay, here's two sticky. Here's two normal. I'm just going to be putting them in the order I have here. Uh, nine slime blocks. I think we saw one slime block here. Can we craft eight more with the slime we have, or is that the first thing we'll need to run out for? Nope, here we have some slime balls. Uh, we can make nine for sure. I'll make eight, though. Leave 40 slime ball. Oops, nope. Leave 40 slime balls uh, for us to use later. We might be in need of slime balls at some point, so we want to make sure we have plenty. Uh, let's see. 14 redstone dust. That looks like we only have about seven broken down. That's okay. All it takes a moment here to fix that. Here's our 14 redstone dust. I'm planning on hitting a wall, definitely with the observers, but probably beforehand as well. And then we will uh, go out and gather those resources. 12 observers. Like I said, here we have uh, three. So we will need more observers. I'm going to go ahead and convert all this redstone. Oh, it's nighttime. I'm going to go ahead and convert all this redstone into dust. Um, because blocks are great for storage, but dust is much more useful when it comes to crafting, building, etc. When you do redstone, I don't think you use a block very often. So we're going to have some dust lying around. Um, observers, I believe they are dependent on quartz, is that correct? Uh, quartz is probably up in the nether chest, actually. Hello, Sylvia. I realize I never bring you around anywhere. I also haven't brought Odie around places lately. Maybe if we need to go out, we can, um... We can bring some, some animals. Alright, so we need some cobblestone, it looks like. And, uh, like I said, we need over... Let's check the book, actually. We need 136 observers there on the right page. If we want to add the call button. And I do think I want that. So we're going to be going to get a mass amount of observers. It uh, looks like, like I said, I believe we'll be restricted by our quartz. So it might include a trip to the nether. Uh, here's 49 observers to start. Uh, let's get a whole ton more cobblestone. Always nice to have just industrial amounts of cobblestone lying around. Um, we're going to go ahead and put in the observers we need in the project box right now. And then when we reach the... The end of the left hand page, we'll begin working on the right hand page because it's technically not essential. The flying machine will work without a call button and there's probably a much better way I can make a call button. Um, so if you guys want to chime in maybe with some ideas, I will gladly accept the ideas. However, it might be too late. I would have already crafted all of the uh, 
all of the observers. However, I'm not really concerned. All right, let's get some more quartz as well. And I believe the amount of observers that... Oh, wow, yeah, we are, we are very low on quartz. The amount of observers I need is two stacks of 64, and then I think eight um, additional locks. So we're actually almost there. We're not, we're not too far off. We are not too far off. All right, so let me put... How many did we need? From the book, it says we need 12. So let's go ahead and place those in. There is 12 right there. And I'll go ahead and toss all the extra observers right here into this chest. Uh, and then all this cobblestone I'll put in here, I suppose. Uh, next up is red wool. Now, red wool is not essential one bit. Uh, red wool is actually... Do I already have shears that I've used? Oh, I guess not. Red wool is more of a... Of a little bit of a, um, an organizational thing. When you're working with redstone, it can be very easy for your lines to get all mixed up and uh, it can be very hard to follow them all. And so it is advisable to use uh, wool because you can have it different colors to uh, differentiate your different lines of redstone. Maybe you have a lever hooked up to a redstone lamp and that's on a light blue wool line. And if you have a button going to a piston, that can be on the red wool line. So you can see uh, if your lines cross at all. It's an, it's an organizational thing. and. Um, a little bit of a fun fact, but I have taken several uh, courses both in high school and college related to um, circuitry and creating a, a circuit boards. And one of the organizational things they do is they advise that if you have um, your power supply, it should be a red wire and your ground connection should be a black wire. So that way, you know, red for power and uh, black for ground. If you are saying, hey, I need to ground this uh, LED light, uh, better use a black wire and hook it up to this black wire. It helps to keep things nice and organized. All right, thankfully I had a bunch of um, wool already lying around, or not wool, I had some dyed sheep lying around. Regis, come on now, we need to get back home. I had it lying around because of the carpet in the Overlook Hotel is uh, orange and red. See, projects cross over all the time, so it's super useful to have. Just your general supplies going on. This is going to be a super awesome episode, by the way. It, it feels so nice to have uh, an end goal to work for. And having the elevator as this plan, we need to gather up all the resources. It's very Minecraft. I, I, it's, it's so wonderful. Of course, we're playing Minecraft, but it just feels like the epitome of a Minecraft experience saying, I want to build this. Better go get the resources as opposed to, you know, maybe being late game and saying, okay, oh, I want to build like the Sistine Chapel. Let me just go to my Sistine Chapel chest and pulling out everything you could possibly need. Perfect. So there is our 14, a uh, 12 red wool, not 14, 12 red wool. And I chose red just because it's the color I grabbed first out of the creative menu when I was building in the testing world. Okay. So after red wool comes two obsidian, that would be in this chest. We have some obsidian. Wonderful. Obsidian gets added. Okay. And then we have gray glazed terracotta and black glazed terracotta. Um, I'm going to skip over those temporarily because I actually don't know how to craft those off the top of my head. Uh, so I'm going to leave two blank spaces, actually three blank spaces, blank spaces. There we go. Uh, because I need to craft two uh, stone buttons as well. Again, stone buttons because... Uh, just the color I decided to choose. I think stone buttons and wood buttons technically have different properties, but I don't think it should matter for us. Okay, glazed terracotta. I believe you take normal terracotta and you smelt it again. So what are the colors I want? I want gray and black. Well, thankfully, I live in a mesa. And, or well, I live next to a mesa, technically. I live next to a mesa. And a mesa has everything you could ever need. So here's our brown. Oh, we need. Well, we don't need brown. We need black. That's okay. We can get some of the undyed stuff and we can dye it ourselves. Here we are. Perfection. Just harvest up maybe a, a stack of this. And, uh, you know, I always like to make sure that the mountain uh, doesn't lose its uh, uniqueness when I'm chopping things away, which is why I'll sometimes even go like underground in order to make this happen. But I think if I just chop off the sides here, shouldn't be too bad. I don't want to leave harsh lines or anything. 
what do we have so far? 45 should be plenty with whatever is up here on the ground. Should be over a stack. Yep, there's 60, 61, 62. 62 is almost a stack. Let's swoop on down. And then we will uh, get smelting. I believe we have to smelt this to get it. Uh, should we diet first? I think we should diet first. Uh, not like go on a diet. I mean diet as in change the color of the material. We wanted... I believe it was gray and black. Um, okay, well, I know I just put... Where do I keep my dye? In here? Oh, uh, that's only light gray. What I was going to say is I know I just put some... Um, I just put some ink sacks in the chest in the mines. Let's see if there's any other squids out here. A squid would be real nice right about now. I could just... Uh, Swing my netherite sword, and um, all of a sudden we'd have die. Mm, doesn't look like there's any. Okay, well, let's see what we've got in here then. Let's see if this will be enough. It's three. Three is probably not enough. Okay. Well, 24 is what I need, right? I need exactly 24. Yeah, I need 20. Oh, I need two black and 24 gray. Gray. Um, that's a, that's a shame. Okay, let me get this smelting. Okay. And I will, let's go find a, let's go find ourselves a squid. There should be some around here somewhere. There's one right there. Looting do your thing, please. Looting do your thing. We got three. Okay. Nice. We can craft that with some bone meal or white dye and make some gray. And then we do need a lot of quartz, but uh, the video is beginning to run a little long. And so I might uh, off camera mine the quartz and uh, maybe I could put it into a little time lapse or something if you guys would like to see that. Uh, it would help us uh, just make sure we stay on pace. That way we can start the project tomorrow or not tomorrow. I don't post a Minecraft video every day, but we can start the project. Wait, I mined gray. There's gray terracotta right here. That's brown. I don't understand colors. I mean, what in heaven's name are colors anyway? Holy bucket, so hard to read. This isn't gray. This Well, I would help if the colors that the game said were the actual colors we saw. That would be useful, but they're not. So we'll have to get over it. Um, but anyway, I think I'll mind the cords off camera. Uh, and we can kick off the next episode doing the entire uh, elevator project. I'm planning on doing it um, with minimal cuts. I want to do it sort of in real time, but live redstone can be uh, very finicky, a very finicky beast. And so we might end up um, resulting to doing some, some off-camera comparison one. I'll try and take good pictures and, and everything. Okay, here's the black terracotta. That's what it looks like. And we use black terracotta, no particular reason, uh, but terracotta as a block is useful because it cannot be... Um, moved by the slime blocks it um it just the slime moves right by it it can be moved by pistons i believe though so that unless it's the other way around it's one of those two things it can be moved by one thing and can't be moved by another uh so that is very useful all right look at that that's soon going to be an elevator all you have to do is walk in click the button and you'll descend it's going to be super super awesome and once we're done we'll decorate it as well uh, no questions about that. Let's go ahead and switch this over to working on the gray terracotta as well, uh, because that way we could potentially begin um, making making moves, if you will. This mine shaft is gonna be the coolest mine shaft ever. Let's go ahead and fall down it. We oh, I'm gonna fall. Oh, half health. Okay, that's fine. I know it was gonna fall, but I oh, ouch. Hi. Very hostile. We're also gonna have to probably dig out a little bit more. Um, down at the bottom layer there. I might do that off camera as well. I'll make sure we're ready. Next episode, we're building this thing. No chance we don't. No chance we aren't building it. That is a Apple guy official promise. That's my, that's my, uh, <laughs> moss farm. All right, how are we looking? Almost done-ish? Sort of almost done? Yep, we're getting there. I want to get uh, everything placed in this box for certain. Uh, however, it might be better if I just uh, went ahead and ended the video off here. 
because obviously we're going to just collect these glazed terracotta blocks, place them into our project box, and then it'll be ready to continue. I think that is going to be all for now, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please hit like and subscribe, and tell your friends about my channel if you think they would enjoy it. It means a lot to me when you guys see my videos around, and I will catch you guys all back here next time. Until then, as always, take care.